Do you want to master the key to any successful relationship? I'm about to tell you how to unlock the secret to success in both your professional and personal life. It's really quite simple. Just shut up and listen. As a professor, when I'm teaching communication to my students, I'm happy if the only thing they learn is how to listen. That is how important listening is in any relationship. If you can listen, everything else will fall into place. If you don't listen, the relationship is destined to fail. Listening non-judgmentally to your client is the foundation for achieving the quality outcomes you both desire. Evidence shows that effective listening leads to better relationships with clients. It decreases their anxiety and helps them trust you. If you listen and they trust you, you will be more productive and efficient when working with clients because they will tell you all of the important information you need to know to do your job. And clients will follow through with the plan you develop together. The bottom line is, that if they feel listened to, clients will feel better about working with you. I have often gotten compliments from clients for being a knowledgeable resource that helped them identify how to achieve their goals. What is funny is that, in these situations I say very little. The trick is to simply shut up and listen. Okay, so are you ready to listen? Listening is not a passive act. So pay attention. You may need to put down your phone or switch back to this tab on your browser. Have you ever found yourself pretending to listen to someone? You're hearing what they say but not giving them your full attention? Maybe you're passively listening to this video if you're doing something else at the same time right now. I have to admit I'm guilty of this. Not only passively listening to YouTube, but my kids. I'm good at acknowledging them by saying things like yes, oh, and uh-huh, but sometimes I tune out, and I've been caught. One time, Jeremy was telling me a long story in the car while I was driving. When he asked a question and I couldn't answer, he realized I wasn't actually paying attention to anything he'd said. Since then, I've had to tell him a few times that I can't listen fully while I'm driving because I need to focus on the road. The moral of the story is, hearing allows us to listen, but is not the same as listening. The International Listening Association defines listening as the process of receiving, constructing meaning from, and responding to spoken and or nonverbal messages. To improve a relationship, you need to actively listen to the other person. Focus on them and try to understand what they are saying. Make sure you are ready to listen. Pay attention to what is said, but more than that, notice how they say it. Use your eyes to pick up nonverbal cues and ears to pick up on verbal cues. Have you ever heard someone tell you something you could tell they didn't mean because of the tone in their voice? It's like when my kids are forced to say, Sorry, Mom. Read the nonverbal signs, like eye movements. When my son rolls his eyes at me, it often means he doesn't care about what I have to say or he just thinks I'm being ridiculous. And be sure to respond to what the person says. If you don't respond, the speaker can feel like they're talking to themselves. Listening is a dynamic process. The HURRIER model is an acronym for Hearing, Understanding, Remembering, Interpreting, Evaluating, and Responding. Let's go through it with an example. Someone is talking. In this example, my daughter Jennifer. Hearing is the physical process of perceiving the sound. Remember, you can hear without listening, but you cannot listen without hearing. Once you hear the sound, you need to understand what is being said to listen effectively. Language or terminology are examples of barriers to understanding. You must also be able to remember it. Here's an interesting quote. I think I believe it. It explains why I need to say the same thing multiple times to people. If you are only going to remember 20% of this video accurately, you might want to watch it again. Information that you perceive as important will then be interpreted within the context of the conversation. 
Here is where paying attention to verbal and nonverbal cues is important to understand the full meaning of the message. You will want to check your perceptions with the speaker to ensure that you have interpreted the message correctly. Listening is effective when interpretations are correct. When evaluating the message, you are trying to assess why the speaker is saying what they are saying. You are making connections with the other cues you have picked up on and searching for underlying issues and truth. Responding is important because it demonstrates to the speaker that you are listening. Depending on the situation, you can respond using verbal and or nonverbal messages. Throughout the conversation, you need to attend to the other person's verbal and nonverbal messages. You also need to pay attention to your own verbal and nonverbal cues. To show that you are listening, start out by looking at the other person to show your interest. Then try asking them some open-ended questions. You can use paraphrasing or clarifying statements instead of questions to help them expand on what they are saying. Since so many things can influence your interpretation of their story, practice perception checking. Remember not to interrupt them or change the subject. It can make them feel like you don't care about what they're saying. Be non-judgmental. Don't let your emotions get in the way. Practice using your demeanor, posture, or facial expressions to respond while someone else is talking. Occasionally nodding your head or a quiet uh-huh shows that you're interested. Just try not to overdo it. I would just like to point out that just because you're responding to someone does not mean that you are listening. For example, I was watching a triage nurse doing an assessment recently, and the nurse would frequently say, yeah, 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 uh-huh, while nodding quite vigorously. When we left the room, the patient told me the nurse was over-acknowledging. We laughed, and I said, you know they want you to stop talking when they grab the thermometer. There are so many benefits to listening, both in your professional and your personal life. If you listen, everything else falls into place naturally. That is why I think listening is so important. Listening is the clearest way to convey respect for and acceptance of another person. It demonstrates that what they have to say matters. Giving a client your time and attention makes them feel cared for and worthwhile. It is worth it to take the time to be in the moment with the person you are talking to. Internal and external distractors can block the message. Remove anything that will prevent you from listening. External noise is any environmental barrier like cell phones. Internal noise includes emotions and thoughts. Remember, listening is a skill that is learned over time. So put away those distractions and go practice. You can watch videos of monologues or conversations. Focus on the person and try to figure out what the person is trying to say. The next time you are talking to someone, pay attention to them. Put away distractions. Focus. Try to really listen to them. To help you reflect, you may want to stage a scenario and videotape it. Or you can talk to yourself in the mirror to see your nonverbal expressions. When you're listening to someone, don't worry about thinking about what you're going to say next. It is okay to pause between when they are done speaking and when you start. Silence can help them gather their thoughts too. Learn to simply shut up and listen before someone feels the need to whack you with a pillow. It can be frustrating to talk to someone who isn't listening. I would like to thank you for listening to this video. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe, like, and or comment below the video. Let me know what you want to see next.